Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over several of the new features in the NeoVim 0.9 release. So if that interests you, buckle up and let's go. As a quick overview, we'll be covering tree sitter enhancements, status column, editor config support, nvim underscore app name support, running Lua scripts from the shell, and more. So with the help of tree sitter, the NeoVim help files are now syntax highlighted. If you go into NeoVim and open up the help for nvim, for example, you'll see that the code snippets are highlighted depending on the language provided, which makes scanning and parsing the content much easier. Next, NeoVim has a built-in inspector for TreeSitter. Previously, you needed an additional plugin for the TreeSitter Playground. To demonstrate, I'll open up a TypeScript React component and run the inspect tree command. And I'll equalize my splits, and then I'll move my cursor to the left, and the right split shows which node is matching. And I can move my cursor on the right, and the selection on the left will update to indicate what is being matched. And we could get more help with help inspect underscore tree. Next up is status column, which is a feature to customize the area to the side of a window for things like numbers, signs, and folds. To test this, let's go back into the TypeScript React component and update the status column to percent %l percent %r to represent the line number and the relative line number. And voila! And you can get help by typing help status column. The format of this option is like status line, but there are some minor differences. You can, of course, tweak this option on your own, but plugins are starting to adopt this as well. OK, the next item up is editor config support. Editor config helps maintain consistent coding styles for multiple developers working on the same project across various editors. These settings include things like character encoding, indent style, indent size, and things like that. This is an example editor config file targeting JavaScript files and the package.json file. This feature is on by default, but you can turn it off by setting vim.g.editorconfig defaults. And you can get additional information inside of NeoVim by typing help editor config. For example, you can see that indent size maps to shift width and soft tab stop options and things like that. Next up is the nvim underscore app name environment variable. I actually did a whole video about this feature that you could watch above, but I'll do a quick overview here as well. This feature makes it much easier to quickly switch between different NeoVim configurations. For example, if you weren't using LazyVim, but you wanted to give it a try, you could clone the starter repo in your config folder, and we'll call it LazyVim instead of nvim, then before launching NeoVim, you could pass it the nvim underscore app name environment variable of the folder location that you just cloned. So I already have LazyVim as my default config, so let's set up nvchad instead. So I'll clone nvchad to dot config slash nvchad, and then launch it with nvim underscore app name equals nvchad, and then NeoVim, which will bootstrap that configuration since it's in a fresh, isolated environment. The nice thing is that I could still launch my default config with just nvim, and boom, there's lazyvim. And if I wanted to hop back over to nvchad, then I could do that as well. If you're wondering how this all works, well, it will auto-create matching folders for its state, cache, etc. via the xdg directories, which is how it keeps things isolated. If you found this video helpful so far, please boop the like button. It really does help. Thank you. Oh, and I recently enabled YouTube memberships. I call it the Bike Club. There are four levels with various levels of perks. And subscriptions are still free. OK, next up is running Lua scripts from the shell. NeoVim now has the dash L command line flag that indicates that it should execute a Lua script non-interactively. As an example, I'll paste an echo that outputs a Lua script that will print the Lua table underscore capital G dot arg. The point of this is to show how arguments can get passed from the command line to a Lua script. And boom, you get the arguments that were passed. Of course, you could get much more complicated than this, but the dash L flag opens the door to lots of possibilities. Oh yeah, and if you want more information, you can type help dash L inside of NeoVim. Alrighty, next up is show command location. This is used to display show command information in another location. 
This is especially helpful if you've decided to hide your command line. Okay, for me to demo this, I'm going to use a clean version of NeoVim instead of my LazyVim config. Normally, when you type something like CW to change word, you would see it in the command line. But if you decide to hide the command line by setting its height to zero, then you no longer get any indication of what you just typed. However, with NeoVim 0.9, there is a way. Let's update our status line to be %f for file name, %y for file type, and then we'll right align it with %equals, and then capital %s to indicate the command we want to see, then command l for the current line, and command capital L for the total number of lines. Okay, so this is good, except we still don't see the command. Dollar sign capital S isn't working yet. And that's where our new show command location comes into play. We'll set it to status line, and now it shows up for us. And if you want more information, you could type help show cmd loc inside of NeoVim. Next up is the split keep option to control horizontal split scroll position. To demonstrate this, let's open back up the TypeScript React component that we were looking at earlier. I'll set split keep to cursor and try that first. Then I'll split the buffer, and the new buffer is located at the same relative position as the previous buffer, which may or may not be what you want. So let's try setting split keep to screen instead. And now we'll split again, but this time the scroll position is the same as it was before, which is kind of nice. In addition to those features, there are many others I did not go into. I encourage you to look at the docs and dive in for yourself. If you've already upgraded, the easiest way to do that is to type help news inside of NeoVim. Well, thank you for joining me on this overview of new features in NeoVim 0.9. As I mentioned before, there are also other new features you could look into as well. Oh, and YouTube seems to think that you'll like this video from me as well. As always, I hope to see you next time. Until then, keep learning.